Hello, Nikki Does here, back again with another shaky handy cam video on the Panda Placer A1 and the unbelievably awesome Open PNP version 2. Point something software that makes this whole thing come to life. Um, this software is actually what takes quite inexpensive, I'll say cheap hardware, and turns it into something amazing. What it really means is that with fairly limited accuracy, although more accuracy than the layman PNP can produce, but with fairly low accuracy, you can do some pretty amazing things. So um, let's take a quickie look at the Panda Placer hardware, which is currently not enabled. It's powered. You can see lots of blue LEDs, and we know all good things have blue LEDs. Lots of blue LEDs, and we have the two nozzles here with their two rotates, and we have this uh, y carriage, and we have an X carriage. So we have X, Y motion. We have some two Z motions, which are tied together, and we have two rotate motions, one for each nozzle. Schnoozle, as I like to call them. Um, and then this is the uh, slot feeder, the A, what is it, AS1. Bamboo feeder AS1 is unfortunately printed right in here, which makes the printing a little bit wonky but um, it operates off a single servo and um, we may be able to see that go on this video, although I doubt it. Um, there is a nozzle change station over here. Not sure exactly why, but it doesn't fit the largest nozzle, so that must have been a later addition to the kit. Um, I've built my, so I've gone off the, the reservation, off the instructions reservation here. Panda Placer gives you this fiducial for calibrating the machine, open PNP, I think not too uh, long ago, released some really awesome stuff in Issues and Solutions that lets you dual level calibrate. And with these two fiducials, one at the board height and one a few millimeters higher, you basically get to calibrate everything about the machine. Give me a second while I use the, uh, while I remove the jack stand here from the machine, which I didn't do before the video. You get a nice view of my foot. And um, yeah, so, the fiducials, I think I may have posted this already, but this is a, an SVG that I produced of these fiducials. I then printed on, uh, this happens to be Canon semi-gloss paper, which is all I had. And then I take a piece of cellophane tape and I put that over the top to give it a good matte finish. So you can see the glossy one there. And then here's the matte one. And you need the matte finish because a huge part of the calibration takes the camera off axis, left or right or forward or back of the fiducial, and looks for the fiducial to get your pixel, your camera accuracy and your camera pixel accuracy. So you need that non-gloss surface or else you'll get reflections from the up and down lights. Speaking of the up and down lights on this, there is a great diffuser here that helps keep the lights quite diffuse. And there is one on the down light also on the up top camera. There's a diffuser that wraps around. In fact, you don't see the LEDs at all. They all shine through the diffuser. So um, let's get this thing started up and homed. Uh, as far as the configuration goes, that's that would be a whole series of videos that we can go through. Uh, I need comments from you on uh, if you are stuck and you need help in certain places because the overall configuration of OpenPNP is, yeah, it's, it's a, there's a learning curve. So let's start out. I've already um, set up my two drivers. I've got my serial port set up for both the motion controller up here and the slot feeder here. So if I press power on, we should hear the beep. Not sure if you heard that. That is the Super Mario Brothers first bar of the theme. Uh, I will now hit home and we'll see the machine go through a homing sequence. And I'm gonna do that twice. So we're going to hit an X limit, which is a physical limit. We'll hit a Y limit, which is another physical limit. We'll hit a Z limit, which you can see there is another physical limit. Then we're going to shoot over and look for the fiducials, and then we're going to calibrate nozzle one, which is loaded, and then we're going to calibrate nozzle two, which is loaded. And you can see it rotate to do a runout calibration. It's figuring out where the center of the nozzle is for each of the rotational positions that it can go through. So I said I'd do that twice. So you got to see that. Um, I'm going to now show you on the screen what happens during that calibration. So the X and Y is boring. You won't see anything. So this is X. I'm watching over here. That was X. That's Y. Now it's going to shoot over. 
there's Z. And now it's going to look at the fiducial mark, find that, and now look at this as it finds the nozzle. So there's nozzle one, and there's nozzle two. And it's finding the, oops, look at that. It just said, oh, it's way over here. So I don't know if that's cool or not, but I'll have to figure that out. And then the LEDs are off now. So this little sunburst up here tells me the, the uh, LEDs are off. I can turn those back on. You can see the LEDs on, off, on, off. And if I, if I change from the top camera to the bottom camera, we can do the same thing. We can turn on the bottom LEDs, which looks like an Ikea lamp, and off. So there. And look at that cute little discard bin right there. That's where all your expensive components that didn't get placed are going to end up. So let's run that homing routine one more time now that you've seen it on the, um, on the screen so you get a better idea of what's going on over here now. So X, Y, Z, Z. Now we're doing the fiducial and now we're going to do a rotate on N1. And then we're going to do a rotate on N2. And that's the end of calibration. All right, like, comment, subscribe, yell, scream, jump, shout, whatever you like to do, but it does help me out making these videos. Thank you so much for watching.